In the previous lesson, we learned how can we use item loaders to structureize our data with the item classes we define and also apply some processors using the loader. So in this lesson, what we'll do is recap what we did so that there is no holes in your understanding. So first of all, what we did is created our item, that is the ebook item class, and then we defined fields. Now I'm sure most of you got confused in this input processors and output processors. So the first thing is that the input processor, as I mentioned, when we go ahead and say loader add a CSS, what we did is just said that add this selectors value to the title field. And if we want, we can use XPath as well. But one thing to notice is that when we get this value, that is if I open up our scrapey shell so that we get the interactive data as well. So let's open up our scrapey shell, scrapey shell, and then I'll paste in the URL. That is this one right here. Copy it, paste it here. And then what we want to do is just get the data that is this selector right here so when we extract this selection that is our response css and we want to just get the data from the h3 a tag and the attribute and the attribute is title now note that i will not use the get method because we just want to see the selection which is happening right here so we do that now you will see that we get a lot of things. So what I will do is just store that inside of a variable that is the titles because we have a lot of output and the titles is a list which I can verify using the type function that is the titles type. You can see it is a scrapey selector selector list. Okay, so we have a list of different selectors. Now what we want to do is just get the first data. So we can just do titles and then indexing, slice out the first value with the zero index. That is the first one. And then if I hit enter, you can see we get the first one. That is the data, it's only the Himalayas, which is the first one inside of our page, you can see. So here what happens is that this selector gets passed on to our items, that is, its data, that is this one right here, gets given to our input processor. Now, in our input processor, you can see we are using map compose. So here, if we want, we can provide multiple functions. So let's say what I can do is just go ahead and define, let's say, convert to dollar like this, and then we will get, let's say, a euro value or a pound sign, so pounds, and then what I can do is just go ahead and return the pounds multiplied by something that is, let's say I don't know, to just get it the right value so that it's converted into a dollar. This is a arbitrary value, not the actual value. So let's say we create a function like this that is convert to dollar. And then here we can just give it to the map compose that is first of all, get the price that is convert it into a floating point number that is a float and then apply the convert to dollar function as well. So that's how we can use the map compose to perform different functions. But here we have just used the get price. So this data right here, that is it's only the Himalayas. So I will just copy this value that is titles zero. And then let's extract the value using the get method. And then I'll just say it is the text or the data that is this right here. So let's store it in the data and then we can view the data. You can see it's our data. Now this data gets passed to our get price function because map compose just takes this function that is it's only the Himalayas. So let's copy it. And then if I just open up this editor, I can paste in the value. So this string right here gets passed on to our get price and that price is just converted into a float and the pound sign is replaced. We return that value. And because we have this function right here as well, the return value of get price is given to convert to dollar. And that is again is converted to dollar. And after getting the value from our convert to dollar, the value is kept 
in our item loader. That is the loader item right here. And then when we call our yield right here, that is the load item method, what it does is gives that stored value to our output processor. And as we saw earlier, we have a list of items that is we had to use this slicing right here that's why what happens is our take first just takes the first value as it sounds that's why we use the output processor as take first and that value gets taken first that is if we want we can also use other output processors like there is a output processor called join what it will do is just join all of the values in a list so if you want to join the values, then you can use that. But for this case, take first is just fine. And for the same reason, we had to define our output processor of the title field with take first as well, because as I mentioned, we will get a list of the selections. That's why we have to take the first value, even if it is a list with only one item. So that's how we use our item loader, process the values with input processors and then we can apply the output processor when we load the item like this. So that's the whole story of items and item loaders in our projects.